Welcome to a chapter a day, Genesis 31. It's now time for Jacob to return home. Twenty years have passed since Jacob is living in Haran. During these twenty challenging years, Jacob worked tirelessly until sleep left his eyes. He was mistreated and his salary was changed repeatedly. But God was with Jacob. God saw the hardship and the deceptions that he had to endure. And so God told him in a dream one night that it was time for him to return home. And he heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. So we see here where Laban's son were accusing Jacob of taking away their father's possession, basically. But this was not so. If Laban was honest in the arrangement between him and Jacob, read the animals he should get for his payment, then God would not intervene and allow the animals to reproduce, having the description that matches the payment that Jacob should get. God basically took away the animals and gave them to Jacob, and this made Laban angry. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father hath deceived me, and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. In other words, God prevented Laban from hurting Jacob physically. But for surety, he was hurting Jacob emotionally. Can you imagine being in the field during a hot, sunny day, and in the night to endure the cold time, doing everything to protect the animals? For Laban? So now we see why God had to intervene. Deuteronomy 24 verse 14 says, Do not take advantage of a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether that worker is a fellow Israelite or a foreigner residing in one of your towns. And as the story continues, you're going to realize that Laban was not treating Jacob fairly. If he said thus, The speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, The ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father, and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes, and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes. When God is with someone, you have to be careful of how you treat the individual. You cannot outdo God. God is always one step ahead. So he tried to get all the possessions for himself, but God allowed Jacob to get what was fairly due to him he said lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight speckled and gristled for i have seen all that laban doeth unto thee i am the god of bethel where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vowest thou vowest a vow unto me now arise get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred jacob was not sent to haran to spend the rest of his life. He was told to go to Haran for a while, to stay with Laban, and to get a wife while he's there. But 20 years have passed, and God is now saying to Jacob, it is time to return home. 
God knows when it is the right time to move. And so we ought to trust him. So when he says it is time to go, do not hesitate because he already have the way paved ahead for you to reach wherever he intends for you to go. No danger will come your way because he's the one that is ahead of you and he will know what to do. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours and our children. Even the wives agreed that it was obvious that Laban was treating Jacob unfairly. And is as if Laban wanted everything for himself. So the daughters agreed with what Jacob said, that it was time for them to take everything and go. Now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Padan Aram, or to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep. And Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had. And he rose up and passed over the river, and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey. And they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. I can imagine Laban chasing after Jacob, saying, I cannot afford for Jacob to go, because I will not be blessed the same without him. Laban was very selfish. He was acting like a miser, wanting everything for himself. If he and Jacob had a good relationship, then Jacob would not have to leave like this. But we are going to realize later on in the story why Jacob left this way. Took him in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the Mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the Mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done? that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me, and didst not tell me, that I might have sent thee away with mirth, and with songs, with tabret, and with harp? Now Jacob knew that was not true. Laban would not want Jacob to leave. And even if I allowed Jacob to leave, he would not allow Jacob to leave with all that truly belongs to him. I can imagine Jacob saying in his mind, what a liar. If Laban was not able to give him his fair salary, would Laban have a party, a going away party for Jacob? And hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. And now, though thou wouldst needs be gone, because thou saw longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid. For I said, Peradventure thou wouldst take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. Laban's only reason for talking to Jacob in such a pleasant way, and not hurting him, is only because God had warned him before. Nonetheless, we see here now where Laban realized that his gods are missing. Jacob knew that he did not take anything 
that didn't belong to him. And so Jacob boldly declared that with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. If only he had known that it was the love of his life that actually stole the gods. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tents. But he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. Persons have many different views as to why Rachel took the gods. But one view that I share is that she took the gods out of spite because she see where Laban was unfair to Jacob and all that he had or all that he should have gotten, he did not get. And so she wanted to take away something that was precious to Laban as her inheritance, since it seems as if Laban wanted everything for himself. But persons may disagree by saying that if she was truly converted to the God of Jacob, then she wouldn't even want these gods as an inheritance. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. And Jacob was wroth and chowed with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years have I been with thee. Thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was. In the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou hadst sent me away now empty. God hath seen my affliction, and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children. So we see here where Laban actually admitted that in his mind he believed that everything that Jacob had, including his wives and his children. So it's obvious that he wanted free labor from Jacob. And these cattle are my cattle. And all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore come thou. Let us make a covenant, I and thou. And let it be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made an heap. And they did eat thereupon the heap. And Laban called it Jagar Sahadatha, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid. And Mitzpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that 
I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us. And Jacob sware by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount, and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread, and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning Laban rose up, and kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them. And Laban departed, and returned unto his place. Even up until this point, Laban wanted control over Jacob. That's it for now for a chapter a day. Until next time, God bless you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, our God, we exalt you. We lift you up because you are worthy. God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another chapter. God, you remind us in your words how important it is to treat each other fairly. Mighty God, I pray, Father, if there's any spirit of dishonesty in us, O oh God Almighty, that you will cleanse us, O oh God, that you will set us free. Father, I pray just as how you intervene in the life of Jacob and prevented Laban from hurting him, that God, you will do the same for us. God Almighty, you know the persons that are around us. Oh God, you know those who don't have good intention towards us. And so I pray, mighty God, that you will speak to their hearts. God Almighty, that you will stop them in their track. Father God, continue to be the good God that takes care of his children. Give us ears so we can hear you, God. Just as oh Jacob heard when it was time for him to move. I pray, mighty God, that we too will hear your voice and know when it is time for us to move. God, continue to have your way in our lives as we say thanks and give you the glory and the honor. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. God bless you.